and welcome to the show. It's me, JP, and it's time for JP's product pick of the week. But perhaps you knew that already, because here we are. I see that we've got a bunch of people already over in the YouTube chat and in the Discord, so thanks for stopping by, everyone. If you're wondering what is this Discord chat of which you speak, that is available over at adafru.it slash discord, and you'll get an instant invite to our Discord server. And there you'll find the live broadcast channel is where the discussion is happening. Uh, so, first things first, head to this link because this is where today's product pick or this week's product pick is. If you point a camera or something at that QR code or head to this URL, you're going to end up right here on this very product page. And if you, uh, if you watch as I refresh, we're going to see this is going to come magically into stock at half price, let's see, we have uh, 39 in stock, and there's a maximum of 10 per customer, so 3.9 of you can uh, jump on that right now, or spread it out a little bit. Don't get, uh, don't get crazy, you might man, just need one or two of these. Uh, so before we go too far into it, let's have Lady Ada tell us all about this week's product pick of the week. Take it away, Lady Ada. Okay, we've got finally, after many years, this is a quite an old design, but I finally got it out. It's the Seesaw I2C encoder. So these are rotary encoders, which everyone loves, but they're kind of a pain to use. But I put them on a board with a Seesaw chip, a SAMD09, uh, even a NeoPixel on there, and a little bit of support circuitry, and now you can plug it in and chain them over I2C. It's a very easy way to add a rotary encoder. Now this actually come, it comes just as the PCB. Solder on your rotary encoder. We might have a version that's pre-assembled later, but basically you can connect up to eight because there's uh, three address pins on the back. Just select, you know, just solder close a different uh, jumper set for each one. Here's a demonstration of having three of them um, connected up. But it's like, if you want to have a rotary encoder, it's like often very challenging to do. Um, I mean, you can do it, but you have to deal with timers and pin interrupts and all that. This is our I squared C. It works with Arduino. It works with CircuitPython. It works with Python. Very, very easy to use. Okay, so I've got here, uh, this is my Feather M4, and I've got an OLED. And then, you know, as I twist this, you can see this is just reading the number from here. All the, the pulse management and debouncing and even the NeoPixel timing stuff, that's all done over I2C using a couple commands. Um, on the back, you can even see there's this, this little LED here that's... Um, that goes off every time there's a movement, either a twist or a, a button press. Oh yeah, if, you, if I press the button, you can see P for press. There's an interrupt output again if you don't want to uh, pull I2C, because it's constantly asking I2C every 50 milliseconds, hey, is there any new data? But you can also use the interrupt pin if you want. And then, um, you know, use it with anything with a STEM EQT connector or I2C for very easy, very fast, Rotary encoder connectivity. It works with any rotary encoder with or without a switch. I meant to like the switch. But and don't want at switch. a great price, compare. Yes. Go out there and compare. It's only a couple bucks. And then uh, if people really like these, we can maybe offer a version that has a rotary encoder already soldered in. But we wanted to get these out to people real fast. And also, yeah. some people like detents and some people don't like detents and some people want 10 yeah. detents per rotation, some like 24. Pick and choose your favorite. Um, but I'm really psyched because I've always loved rotary encoders. And I've always hated how hard they are to use. Every chip is a little bit different. Uh, CircuitPython makes it really easy. Um, this demo's an Arduino, and it was a breeze. It only took a few minutes to get this demo together. Yeah, all right. I love rotary encoders, too. In fact, I'm going to head over to my mystery cabinet and grab mine, and then we'll take a look at this very cool product. That is my product pick of the week this week. It is the I2C Cutie Rotary Encoder Breakout with NeoPixel. 
This is terrific. You can plug this in over the Stemma QT cables. That's the SparkFun Quick Connect, these little guys here. Uh, you can add a rotary encoder to it. You probably definitely want to do that. So this plugs right into here. You solder it in. Uh, and like Lady Ada said, we may have a version that comes pre-soldered. But by adding this board, you get a really convenient way to add a uh, rotary encoder to your project. So what I'd love to do is actually, let me jump to a camera, an overhead camera here, and take a look at a little demo I built. I'll just uh, set this off to the side a little bit, and I'll pop in over here. There you can see three of them. Uh, so I've taken a Feather. I have a Feather M4 Express, and I'm on one of these Feather uh, quadruplers here, Feather Breakout, so we can add a few different things. The only things I'm using in this case are the Feather and this uh, OLED display wing. And then you can see this OLED display wing has a convenient Stemma QT uh, plug on it. So I've plugged this into one, two, three, and four of our rotary encoder breakouts. And then you can see we're getting an update on the encoder values of three of them. That's just what fit in the, in the code here, and I didn't modify this. This is the sort of basic example code that Lady Ada posted with the library. And you can see as I turn that, not only am I adjusting these values, but I'm also adjusting the NeoPixel color there. Uh, and this will work for any of them. In fact, they'll also work at the same time. So you don't have to worry about timing that stuff yourself. It all is working out over I2C. So these have up to eight of them chainable on a single I2C port because they have different uh, address jumpers on the bottom side of them. And if we take this uh, here, you can flip that over and, and you'll see here, I'm going to put on my glasses. You'll see here we have, uh, let me grab something to point with, in fact, too. There we go, I'm back. Uh, so you have on the back side of this, there's the little uh, SAMD09 that sorts out all of the uh, breakout pins on this as well as the I2C. And here's all NeoPixel, reverse mount NeoPixel. These are the address buffers here. So you get, I think it's address 36 by default, 37, 38, both of those 39, uh, and so on. So you can, you can do different combinations of those to get eight different addresses. Uh, and you can also, instead of using Stemma QT, if you want to mount this on a breadboard or on a permaproto board, you can use standard header pins right here. And it's also got some little uh, M2.5 holes for mounting. And so that's what I did here. I just designed a little uh, 3D printable that I could plug those into with some standoffs so you can see those in action. In fact, if I turn one of those, you'll see the little NeoPixel changing there from the underside of it. Uh, and that's just sort of a little temporary thing to, to keep these things uh, together on a board, but you don't need that. You can just plug these in and have them loose out on your desk while you're prototyping something, which is really terrific. Um, and let's also take a look if you uh, go to the serial output here. So I'm going to bring this up. This is the serial monitor. Uh, from Arduino. So this is running in Arduino right now. And there's a circuit Python and Python library in the works. But right now, this is uh, it's going to work most easily inside of Arduino. And so you can see I'm recording those uh, positions, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So there's that kind of fourth one working. And we also get uh, pressing. So if I click these, these are push encoders that have a, essentially a button built into them as well. Uh, so that uses a little bonus uh, of the of the encoder and of the breakout to be able to register presses, which is a really good uh, element for user interfaces. You can select things uh, with the dial and then stamp them in by clicking on that. If we take a look at the code for this, I'm going to bring up this little uh, window here. Uh, so this is the Arduino sample code that comes with a library called QT Multi, I think, uh, or, or rather uh, Encoder Multi, something like that. Uh, if we look right here, this is one of the key lines. We, we can scroll back up, but I just wanted to show you while I have it down here. This is how simple it is to ask for the encoder position. With the library, you just simply uh, call one of the encoders that you've uh, created and say, get encoder position. And that returns these values that you see scrolling here on the, on the uh, display as I turn that. 
Um, the other thing that we're doing is setting the pixel color to be a hue wheel uh, using a little function for, for color based on hue. Uh, and then showing those values up on the display as well. So looking up uh, at the beginning of this code here, we can see I'm using the LED, so we set this value to true. I'm setting up the Seesaw library. So this is really cool. This is uh, what makes something like this work. So a lot of these boards that we use have their own little interface chip on them and their own software that talks over I2C to your microcontroller. In this case, we're using our little Seesaw uh, chip and library, which is sort of like a protocol for talking to a device. So if you look at a, a sort of bog standard rotary encoder, it's got no smarts on it. It's just some switches in there, really. Uh, the chip on the back of that, that Seesaw chip, in this case, it's the SAMD09, that's running our Seesaw software. And then we have a Seesaw library running on the microcontroller and the two of those talk to each other over I squared C. So this has digital IO pins, it has a NeoPixel pin. Uh, the Seesaw chip you're using may have analog pins. The uh, library has an encoder, these rotary encoder commands added to it. So there's a recent addition to that library, which now mean if the thing that's plugged into the Seesaw chip is a rotary encoder, we can talk to it really easily, which is what makes setup easy. So here you can see I set up the Seesaw object and then in the uh, definition here, I'm defining the switch, which is that little click switch, as using pin 24 on that Seesaw chip, and the NeoPixel is on pin 6. So again, that's one of the, one of the I.O. chips that's on this Seesaw. And then since these are using I2C, and I'm going to use four of them, we'll set up the base address, which in this case is this default on, on that board of 36. And then we have some code that kind of goes through and checks, okay, do we have a 37, 38, 39? You could do these manually. In this case, it's a kind of convenience code that uh, runs in, in and, and checks those subsequent values to see if they're there. When it finds the encoder, it then sets up the display, sets up serial. If we're using the OLED, it sets that up uh, using the SH110X driver for that OLED. Uh, and then once those seesaws are found, we've set up their addresses. And then we can start uh, setting all those pins to, to be a pull-up to use the, the switch on them. And then we get into the, the bulk of the, the main part of the program here, this, uh, this void loop. And that's where we check for the encoders and then do the thing I showed at the beginning, which is check the coder, encoder position. If you look at, I'm going to pop back to this uh, Chrome browser for a second. If you look at the uh, product page, so I'm going to scroll down here, you'll see there's a, a little link here that says you can use our Arduino library to control and read data. You can then take a look at the library, and this is actually just a subsection of the Seesaw library. So this is the whole Seesaw library, and then there's a bunch of different things that use Seesaw, like the Neo Trellis, like the Cricut, like the Mini TFT Wing. These are all essentially using the same protocol of Seesaw, just different sections of it. Um, and if I scroll down in here or do a little search, I'm going to find there is a get encoder position right here. There's get encoder delta, the enable the encoder interrupt, disable it, set the encoder position. So you can say wherever it is right now, I'm going to call that zero to kind of zero the thing out. Uh, and those are the commands that we use inside of encoder. Uh, here, by the way, there's a nice guide on Seesaw if you want to brush up on that and take a look at the, the general Seesaw idea as well as this little breakout. That's a good way to, to familiarize yourself with it. Uh, and then this is one of the encoders that you can use. That's, that's actually the, the one that I'm using here. It has, I believe, 24 detents, little clicks in it as you turn one full revolution, and it has that push click. Um, so that is about it. I'm wondering, are there any questions? Uh, doctor says, say Seesaw 10 times fast. I think I did, I must have at that point. Uh, seesaw, see some action. Oh, that's easy to say, right, doctor? Uh, the um, questions about I2C, yeah, it's controlled by I2C, but you don't really have to worry too much about I2C. That's just the underlying communication between the two gizmos. Uh, and so using it in practice, using Seesaw stuff, it's as if you're just using a, uh, an object that's plugged directly in in some cases. You can do a digital write or a digital read to a pin that's on the Seesaw. It's just you're using Seesaw rather than board instead of a, a local board pin in many cases. So it's kind of a convenience library. Um, let's see. I think that covers most of the questions, yeah? 
how are we doing on these? Have we sold out? I bet we are close if we haven't already. Uh, oh, let's go back to the... We were at 39. We are out of stock. Okay, so uh, thanks for buying them. All of you got excited and grabbed some. These are really cool. Uh, you can subscribe. Uh, just put in your email address and hit notify me, and you'll get, uh, you'll get notified when those are back in stock. Uh, and they'll be at their normal price of $5.95. Not terrible, but uh, congratulations if you wanted them and got them at the half price. Uh, and I think that's going to do it. So let's uh, jump back over here, and I'm going to grab my little rotary encoder breakout there and say that's my product pick of the week. It is the I squared C QD rotary encoder Stemma QT with NeoPixel breakout board. And that's going to do it for another JP's product pick of the week. Thanks so much for stopping by and I will see you next time. Bye bye everyone.